So I just threw all these performance numbers out at you. What stops that? Well, the M compound brakes have a, have a gray cast friction ring and a floating arrangement, which is connected by pins to the aluminum brake cover. As temperature increases, the pin assembly is able to expand freely in a radial direction, subsequently cooling down again without any residual deformation. This connecting system has been in use since the second gen of the M3 E36. Different with the new F8082, fixed caliper brakes are fitted to the front and rear axles. Four pistons at the front, two in the rear. Predecessors had heavy single piston sliding calipers. I'd recommend, and BMW does as well, drivers should be more restrained in their driving for the first tank of fuel and avoid maximum deceleration wherever safely possible. If you need to not get in an accident because you need to brake hard, I'd, I'd weigh those two out there. Now, why? You might be asking, did I just say that? It concerns the bedding of the brake linking on the friction ring. Both surfaces need to adjust to each other. Moreover, the 20 micrometer thick, that's thin, crosshatch of new brake discs wears away and supports the bedding of the new brake pad on the new disc. You don't want to cause any issues. Occasionally, if you're really getting on the car, you'll see slight cracks. Micro cracks are subject to form when relatively cold. Unused discs are suddenly subject to heavy load. Basically, emergency stops or going really fast and then getting on the brakes. Cracks limit to surface area, so say you've been driving your car fully laden on the highway for an extended period without braking and then are worked in to perform an emergency braking maneuver. The brake discs will go near molten in a slim line of time. Temp can increase from 20-ish degrees to 450. Just take note of that. Once won't do much, yet if the brake disc is required to behave this way consistently, it's possible for surface cracks to form in cast material of the friction ring, specifically near perforation holes. In sports cars, cracks like these are, more than anything, a sign that they are being subjected to the use for which they're intended and designed for. Don't cry, no negative effect on the service life of your brake discs or its braking performance. When it is time to change the brake pad, it is also necessary for the dealer to inspect the brake disc. A new sport pad will be available under the witty name of M Performance Sport Brake Pad. This was developed directly alongside the new brakes. Life expectancy of these pads is considerably longer at high temperatures that typically occur on the track. The standard pad can display a drop in friction coefficient at high temperatures brake fade. The friction coefficient value of sport pads is far more stable. In general, operational noise can generate with any high performance brake under certain driving conditions. However, with sport pads, we do without any form of comfort factor in the car components. We don't really mind. Look at the 911R. Which means that considerable braking noise is simply a fact of life for people who spec them. So keep that in mind. If you want quiet, eh, you might not want those. Just saying. Sport pads are more expensive and act aggressively on the brake discs. Disc wear is several times higher than that of the standard brake pads. I believe BMW requires every time a set of sport pads is fitted, new discs also have to be installed, thus offering sport pad kits consisting of the actual pads plus required discs. Now my last point, I don't want to make this segment of the brakes too long, but bear with me here. The cool down laps on the track are important. It is so critical to allow material in the brake components time to cool down via airstream while you're driving. Go park your car while temperatures near 500 degrees are still milk mustaching on your brake discs. Satan will be transferred throughout the entire brake system. You don't want that. The pads will absorb energy from the hot brake discs. Heat transfer progresses through the back plate and damping plates of standard pads into the brake calipers. In addition to the damping layer of the damping plates, the piston seals and dust shields can also be damaged. This makes quite the uh, unique noise at times, as can the surface coating of the brake calibers. They can also get damaged. Leaving brakes to cool stationary is easy but less than desirable when brake discs are at a temperature of up to 500 degrees. Executing the cool down, you may find brake temperatures generally falling below 200 degrees when you do a cool down lap. Have some respect for your noble steed, you peasant. Normally such temperatures don't occur when subjecting the vehicle to normal use. We're talking about track use. It would be necessary to perform several braking maneuvers in rapid succession. That's the only time a cool down lap's needed. You don't need to do a cool down lap on your drive home from work unless you're really getting after it. From full speed to stationary uh, before any of these levels would be reached, you're, you're fine. Uh, on a track, cool it down. If you're going hard, cool it down. If you're doing illegal stuff, I, I don't encourage that. And don't get anxiety over this, you're not gonna reach 
this level of uh, hot braking in, in stopping the traffic. Just don't rear end anyone. The exhaust sounds, sounds good. Oh.